Hi everyone, it's Derek from the iReady podcast here and this is my reaction to the 2-1 loss against Celtic in the Premiership today. I'm frustrated, I'm disappointed, I'm not going to say I'm angry though because we are working with a limited squad just now and we've been on a great run. There were some good points from the game, absolutely. There were some bad points from the game, <laughs> again, absolutely. It's not telling us anything more about the team because the bad points are what we've seen all along with the team. But I think we shouldn't be overreact about this. It's absolutely disappointing getting to lose a, a big rival derby game like that. However, from where we've been to, you think, a couple of months ago, we were well out of this league. We've got, we're have got eight points behind just now with two games in hand. We are still well in this league and that's incredible to say. So... I'm not going to be angry about that because we are working with a limited squad and if you see the injuries we've got, if you see the bench we had today, it was quite clear that we have got limitations because what Clement's done so far has been phenomenal with this team and for this to be the first downfall of that team so far and we've had some massive games in that time as well, then I think we're, we're on a good stead just now. The game itself, we had one change from the Motherwell game. That was Lundstrom in for Dill. Bit disappointing that because Dill did come in and show something, but Lundstrom has been playing pretty well under Clement so far. So we lined up with Butland, Tavernier, Goldson, Balligan, Ridvan, Lundstrom, Sterling, Cantwell, Seamart, McCausland and Dessers. On the subs bench we have McCrory, Souter, Lammers, Sifuentes, Matondo, Dill, Wright, King and Devine. So the first half overall, we started off decent for the first maybe 5-10 minutes and then we just sunk into our shell. We allowed Celtic to dominate us. Combine that with poor decision making, being timid and far too hesitant as well. We're losing the ball far too much and I think the hesitancy did play a big part of that. When we're getting forward, it was almost like, oh, do I stick or twist, do I pass, do I shoot, what do I do? And then we end up playing the wrong option and losing the ball far too easy. We have seen that time and time again under Clement and again we've said before, possession football isn't his game, he's willing to allow players to try things, but... There's trying things and then there's just either not doing anything with the ball or playing into nobody, which seemed to be the case today as well. In the defence, bar the goal, obviously, we were pretty solid. However, it was the big issue it was from midfield to front. We've seen it time and time again and we just lacked in that last final third. Celtic never gave us a lot of time on the ball. They were pressing us all the time. We actually handled that fairly well, I felt, as well. As well, there was some good passages of play, there was some good one-touch football to get the ball forward. It was just the final decision-making in the end. It was always wasteful, but I felt we handled that part of the game pretty well. It was just a shame that we never done the same to them when we were out of possession, because that's the way to beat them, you get in their face. Celtic had a couple of chances fairly early on, the ball was whizzed across their box, nothing nothing came of it though. We had a couple of shots as well, but it went wide. And the first real proper effort though was on the 25th minute when Celtic scored to make it 1-0. It was a corner in from the right, it was headed down by Sima off the Celtic player's leg, right to Bernardo who had a half volley in a packed box and into the back of the net. It was a great strike, not taking that away from at all, but it was just really poor from Sima. You don't head her down to try and clear the ball. You've just got to head her right away out of the box and he never done that. I don't know if he would just mistimed his jump or not, but it certainly wasn't that good anyway. A bit of fortune obviously with hitting off the Celtic player's leg, but that's what happens when you don't clear the ball properly. As I said, it was a great strike. What summed up the Rangers' performance so far, though, was Dessers on the 33rd minute. He robs the ball in the Celtic half. He drives the ball forward. He gets into the box. He delays, he delays, he delays, and then loses the ball. It was really, really poor and typical of Dessers. He's, he's got to do something. He's either got to shoot or pass. Just don't do nothing, which he done. It sums up the performance so far. Just too hesitant. In fairness to him, though, and we were maybe getting on his back a wee bit too much, and I might be grasping at straws here. However, when you look back on it, he was potentially fouled in the box the Celtic player came in put him off ultimately but there was no attempt to play the ball by the Celtic defender so I don't know you've seen them given before it was very reminiscent of what was ruled a foul in the last game when we got the goal ruled off for that same very type of challenge so certainly claims for a penalty there 41st minute though 
there was a massive bit of controversy. The ball was played out to Cos- McCausland on the right. He gets the ball into the box. He has a shot forcing Hart into a good one-handed save. The ball didn't break for us. We did retain possession though. The ball was then floated into the touchline. Seema looked as if he was potentially getting it, but Alistair Johnson managed to get in, in there first. Now from the camera angle, it looked as if Seema had knocked the ball out and a goal kick was given. However, there was a VAR check and on one angle, as clear as day, it was a handball where Johnson, whether he meant it or not, is by the by, he did knock the ball out. He basically punched the ball out with his hand. There was a VAR check and no penalty was given. That was what was flagged. There was no other decision other than that. It was a goal kick, no penalty, no handball. Nobody could understand it. You know, you, you've got the pundits to a man saying that's a weird decision. That should have been a, that's a stonewall penalty. Even the likes of Neil Lennon in the, in the punditry was saying that that was a stonewall penalty. Nothing given. Weirdly, about 40 minutes later into the second half, we're now hearing that it was an offside was given. Well, that was a bit strange because it was a fairly quick check. VAR is not meant to check for offside unless it was a penalty given or there was a goal resulting from something. Crocker in the commentary has said that he's heard that what the VAR was talking about at the time and there was no discussions of, of offside at all. So see if it was offside, which is fine. Now we have seen an image, but the image that's been seen is the ball has already left Lundstrom's foot. And that's when they've drawn the line. So that's not accurate either. So it would be very interesting to see the the audio from that because what it looks like to me is another Doogie McDonald situation where there's been lies floated about here because as Clement has called it out in his presser afterwards, there was certainly no indication to him that an offside was given. If an offside was given, then why was a goal kick given? And then why did the referee not signal when the VAR check was on that it was for offside as well? So there's three things there. We all knew something like this was going to happen in the game. It was a clear as day penalty. The reasons for it not being a penalty are not clear at all. So I hope the club publicly come out and call this one out because it was an absolute shocking decision. And if it was offside, fine. But what we've been given is inaccurate. And two, why did it take 40 minutes? So... It's, it's a strange one, that one there. And that's really when the, the first half ended up. So into the second half, though, we didn't start well at all and we conceded very early on in the 47th minute with Kyogo scoring. The ball was played from the right to the centre to Kyogo on the edge of the box. Nobody marking, nobody putting a challenge in and he'd done what he'd done best. He's put the laces through it and it's into the top bin. That's the difference in our squad and their squad is they've got players that don't have that hesitation and they will just put their foot through it at the slightest sniff. We hesitate, we delay, we delay, we delay and we still mess it up and we don't take the shot. There was a few instances in the first half as well where the shot was on but we delayed and we stopped and we, we decided to pass. It was just, it was poor. Rest of the half, we never really done much. Celtic never really done much either as well. Another piece of absolutely disgraceful refereeing on the 67th minute, Bernardo, who was already on a booking, a shocking challenge on Goldson, no second yellow card. Cantwell came off on the 69th minute. Dill came on. Cantwell hadn't been playing well at all. Just after that, Seema went off injured right on. Seema went off injured because Alistair Johnson once again should have been given a second yellow card for a, a, an elbow right into Seema's face. Why? And that's, that's again something Clement's called out in the, the presser as well. There are several instances where second yellow cards should have been given. Why not? Doesn't make any sense to me. 71st minute, it was a red card for Balogun. It was a poor touch back to Balogun from Goldson. It was a poor touch from Balogun, who allows Maida in, and Balogun tangles with him and brings him down. No arguments whatsoever, it was a red card. Just, I'm amazed, I'm amazed that the referee found his red card in this time. I think the bigger issue, though, is that it was a really poor decision by Goldson to pass back to him. He had plenty of time, plenty of space. He didn't need to pass back to Balogun and put him in under pressure. Poor from Balogun overall, but it was ultimately maybe out of instinct after that. 77th minute, Lundstrom off and Suter on, and then we started to put Celtic under pressure. They, start, they sat back a wee bit. We were going right for it. And on the 88th minute, we got we pulled the goal back with Tavernier, an absolute stunning free kick from the left side right into the top left corner. Tavernier, it was really the first and only thing he'd done all game because he was poor, he was decent-ish defensively, however going forward he was really poor, you know, he's crossing and his set pieces couldn't beat the first man today, 
that happens with Tavernier a lot, and then he goes and pulls out an absolute stunning goal like that, so it's like, how can you leave him out? But he was poor all game. Celtic had a chance in the 91st minute, and it was an easy take for, for Butland. But for the last 20 minutes of that game, we were by far on top. We had Celtic under the cosh, not putting their keeper under enough pressure though, but what's frustrating about the game is, had we played for the full 90 minutes the way we played the last 20 then it would have been a different outcome absolutely because we got in Celtic's face and that's the way to beat them it's once again we've went to Parkhead and we've not got in Celtic's face that's where it's frustrating a few players you know we haven't learned anything new from them Dessers that chance yeah he was maybe filled ultimately but he had plenty of time to make a decision Seymour he's been off the boil a wee bit the last few while Cantwell another empty shot today Sterling was actually really good Lundstrom was decent Ridvan I thought was, was really good as well today Balogun Goldson poor for the, the, the goals and Butland just his usual self can't really blame him for for any of the goals as well we can be frustrated at our own performance absolutely but the referees have to be called into question on on this as well and I know there's going to be Celtic fans oh blah 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 I don't really care what you say to be honest you if you make comments on our feed here it's just going to get deleted so don't even bother I'm not interested in what you've got to say this is the kind of point though Celtic have been putting pressure constantly on referees and they get the results from it today we got a justified red card, no arguments whatsoever, but the fact that Celtic finished with 11 men today and we never got a penalty for a stonewaller. Now, if it was offside, fine, but I think I've raised more than enough issues with the questionable way that has now came to an offside. I don't believe it for a second, to be honest, but we'll wait and see over the next couple of days what the club do. We go into the next game on the second, that's at home against Kilmarnock. I think Celtic are away to St Mirren, so banana skin fixtures for both of us, potentially there. We'll just wait and see. As I said, frustrated, disappointed, but we are still well within this. We're now going into January, the window's open, we've now signed a player on loan or a striker for six months. We'll see how that takes us. We need to get some players in, we need to to ship some players out we'll see what happens Dave and I won't be back until Wednesday we're going to record a podcast next Wednesday so that'll be after the Kilmarnock game we'll see where we are there and we'll be back then so all that's left to say is keep the heat everyone we're still well in this I hope everybody has a great new year when it comes and we'll see you in 2024 thanks for listening and goodbye <laughs>